I believe the passage for today was that uh, Jed mentioned it many times was awake unto righteousness and sin not. So like I already said, most of you are in La La Land today because of the sins that you have committed against God. They have gave you a confused mind. That's why many of you today are homosexuals, lesbians, you masturbate, you do very, a lot of wicked things, right? Those are your sins. La La Land's like not believing the world is 6,000 years old. Well, that is the biblical account of the Bible. God made so we're in La La Land because we don't believe that instead of the actual scientific account. It's your sin. That, that's, what, that's what I want to concentrate most about. Like, you know, your sin. Well, the book that says the, the book that defines sin is the same book that says the world is six thousand years old. So why should we take anything this book has to say seriously? Well, what's your claim against it? Bible is inaccurate. It's the book of mythology. It's no different than the book of Greek mythology or Norse mythology. And it doesn't need any claims against it when it has nothing to support it. What do you have to support? Your theory. And then it went all the Thousands and thousands of papers of scientific research, hundreds of years of collection of human knowledge using empirical methodologies. <laughs> Not to mention that, antibiotics, they stop working because of evolution. If you don't believe in evolution, you're saying that penicillin should still be fully effective on all diseases. It's not. Gene sequencing reveals that humans share a majority of their DNA with monkeys. I'd like to. Just go for it. Anything else? That's enough for now. Yeah, well, God's word uh, proclaims that God made the earth in six days, and we can see. Uh, by the earth, by many things that the earth is not millions and millions of years old. I want Can you extrapolate I want on that a little bit? I want to encourage you know what, you know what radio car dating is? I want to encourage you, especially you, uh, for you to go yeah. watch some videos of Kent Hovind. I don't know if you guys heard about him. He explored yes. many of those things, especially carbon uh, dating and many, many theories. So you guys should definitely look him up. Dude, we have looked at that. Could you tell me just briefly why I should believe him? Him instead of scientific consensus well, he and talks thousands about science of much and more educated people. He is educated. He is a doctor. He has a doctor's yeah, degree. What's his name? Dr. Chan Dr. Everybody's entitled to that, but they won't So you guys should definitely look that, look that up and look into uh, the claims of Christianity. Don't just be one-minded and look in one direction because... Uh, you know, that's where you're going to be taken, just, you got you to gotta be open-minded, but the point of to be open-minded is to finally find the truth and lock your mind upon that. See, a lot of you are open-minded and it leads you to destruction. A lot of you are still open-minded and that's the, that is the reason you fall into sin, because you can't take a stand for righteousness, take a stand for God. Uh, like I said, the point to be open-minded is to find the truth and lock your mind upon it. And I have found truth. I've been delivered from all of my sins. I've been delivered from drinking, from smoking, smoking pot, lust, sex outside of marriage. I've been delivered. I've been set free by the power of God. And you can't be too. By God or was it your you know, choice? Well, as God includes you need to salvation. So, was it just God who did that, or do you feel like your free will had more to play with that? Well, God was yeah, influencing me, uh, but I had to make the actual choice. It's actually both of us working. It's like a relationship. So God was kind of like your support then? Well, like I said, God was influencing me to make the right choice. When did you find God? Uh, I found, you know, found God Well, I came into a relationship with Him when I was 18 years old. Okay. Yeah, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I was under, uh, well, first of all, I used to be a sinner. And then I decided to reform a little bit. But you're uh, still a sinner, right? uh, a little absolutely bit? Absolutely not. <laughs> Wait, you're not, not a, a sinner? sinner now. You're not a sinner. You're a saint now. Even... Yeah, let me get to the story. But that's okay. unbiblical. So, let him finish. Let, let, me finish. Finish. let me get to the same part. So, I was a sinner, wicked sinner. I used to drink, smoke pot, do many things. But I've seen a lot of my friends became, uh, started to become Christians. Uh, they started to get baptized, you know, doing things in church, and you know, I was kind of losing my friends. 
And I thought to myself, man, I, I don't want to lose my friends, so I guess I'll kind of go along with, go along with the whole thing. So I decided to get baptized. Yet I was not truly converted yet. I lied to everybody and said that, you know, I was ready to get baptized to give my life to Jesus. But that was not the case. I was still living as a hypocrite. So I quit my big sin uh, that I was doing, but, but, but my heart was not yet converted and, and turned to Christ. So I continued on that path for a while. I got baptized, but all that made me was a wet sinner. And that's all that happened to me when I got baptized. So further on, God started to convict me, convict me of my sin, of my hypocrisy. And many of you out here, you're claiming to be Christians, but truly you are hypocrites because you are living a double life. You have sin in your life, and yet you proclaim to be God's child. You weren't converted by the power of Jesus. You were converted by the power of peer pressure. Wait, how do you know? I didn't say I was converted yet. Are we not so, all children of Christ? <laughs> Absolutely not. There's children of the devil and there's children of God. So, where was I? Oh, so wait, were you a child of the devil first, and then you became a child of God? Yeah, so I was a so child. Then we all you were a wet sinner. That's where you were. Oh, I was a wet sinner. Okay. Yes. So I was a wet sinner. I was living a hypocritical life. I was doing things in church, but yet I was not changed. That's many of the people today in church. They're hypocrites and they live in sin. So that was my path, and God started to work. God started to speak into my life the things that I was doing wrong, the sins that I have committed, and that I was living this hypocritical life. And that's why I'm hoping today that God will speak to you of your double life. Today you proclaim that uh, Jed, Jed is wrong or Angela is wrong, some of the things she, uh, they do wrong, but still you have sin in your life, and you proclaim that something's wrong, yet you have, you have sin in your life that it is not confessed yet and not forsaken. So, as I was living this double life, God started to convict me. And one day, it was a Wednesday in 2008. After, uh, I was being under a great conviction when I was in the church service, so I uh, got, out, got out of the church, I went on a, on a car, I parked in a parking lot, and you know, I made a choice that I was gonna give my life to Jesus Christ. So. As I was, so I went, got in my car from the park, and I went back to church. I came to my pastor, and I said I wanted to talk to you. And I came into a room, and I, I prayed, and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And from that moment, I left all my sin and put my faith into Jesus Christ. And I stopped being a sinner, and I became a saint of God. So the Bible talks about two categories of people. Guys, listen up. Two categories of people. I use, uh, it talks about sinners and saints, uh, righteous people and unrighteous. The Bible says, if the righteous are scarcely saved, that's Angela, me, and Jed, if the righteous are scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner be? So, Bible puts uh, two different categories, righteous people and the sinners. The sinners will end up in hell fire, and that's where your path today is leading you. So, I want that you would look into the claims of Jesus Christ, that you would search your heart and see that you are guilty before holy God, that you would truly see God in His holiness and His purity, and then you would see your evil, wicked heart and your evil, wicked ways.